Paul, so now we're going to move on to the fun, or one of the most fun parts of this episode now, yeah? So me and you have to come up with a combined Premier League all-time Arsenal and Spurs 11. <laughs> so this is going to be yeah. fun. <laughs> right, so goalkeeper. Did you say you want me to do the goalkeeper? Yeah, you can have the goalkeeper. As long as you pick okay. Lloris. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look. For me, there's only one goalkeeper in the Premier League era um, for Arsenal that can put forward, and that's big old Dave Seaman. <laughs> 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 it sounds so wrong when I say his name. But hey, what can I do? That's his name, isn't it? But yeah, big Dave. <laughs> that's who that's who I put forward. Is there anyone from your side, any goalies that you put forward? Probably Lloris, right? Yeah, Lloris is the only one because <laughs> most of the other ones are more like comical, like Ian Walker and stuff. <laughs> but, and Gomez is sort of in between. But like Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lloris, he was in between. Lloris is the only the only one realistically. I love Lloris. I think he's been amazing. And David Seaman, like I remember when you came on our podcast, we were speaking about <laughs> David Seaman for ages. <laughs> You know what? I still laugh now just thinking back about that. But there's the Naeem goal, innit? And then I, yeah. I think he Naeem. got caught, I think he got caught in the net as well. <laughs> that yeah, yeah. Trapped like uh, a fish. That's yeah, yeah, that's it. That's I, I said something like that, didn't I? He got trapped <laughs> like a like a fish in a fisherman's net. Yes. Like yeah. <sighs> so yeah, that was that was funny. But <laughs> yeah, for me, there's only only Big Dave. That, <laughs> For me personally, um, yeah, fair. I don't know what you think. Well, no, I think, I think, uh, well, I obviously knew you were going to say that. I didn't know if I thought we maybe might consider uh, Matt Jens, but I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's crazy, he was good, he's a decent goalkeeper, good goal, goalkeeper, but for me, he's Premier League ever, only seaman for me, yeah, that's, that's fair cool. enough, that's fair enough. I think, uh <clears throat> I think he's undeniable. I don't know if he's better than Lloris, really, but I think he's got more sort of um, definitely looks funnier, and I think that's important. Yeah, for yeah. A goalkeeper. And at those weird, he's definitely like, a nice goalkeeper. Yeah, had those weird phases, like obviously the moustache, and then like the ponytail <laughs> phase. <What was> the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the things as well. What made me laugh as well is like when you got lobbed by Ronaldinho. So there's a little theme here of him getting lobbed, but. Again, he got caught in the net, but this time he had a ponytail, which was just made it more <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, now nah, this is weird because he does look a bit like a fisherman. Like with the <laughs> he does. Tassel. And the thing is, he's like fishing as well. Like fishing is like his main thing. You'll see him on Instagram, yeah. like holding fish, taking pictures with fish and stuff like that. So it's quite ironic. Yeah, no, nah, it's weird. It's a long affinity with nets this guy's had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor guy. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Yeah, you can allow Seaman to go in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. I... Sorry, sorry, sorry. That sounds wrong. Let me say that again. You can allow, <laughs> you can allow Big Dave to be in goal. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'll if we fill the goal with Seaman, that'll be a good way of starting the, the team. I think, yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> All right, so Big Dave, you're in, mate. You're in. Okay, right, cool. Yeah. Uh, Paul, you get to do right back. Right back. Okay. Well. Hmm. There's a few names I would shout out. I think MJ was concerned. I might pick Alan Hutton or Alan Hutton or Pascal Kimbonda. Uh, yep, I was. And, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, and then one of my first favorite players, Steve Carr, veteran called Luca. So you know, there's been a few right backs, Trippier. Mm. Um, I won't even pretend I was gonna pick Serge, but maybe it could have happened. Uh, but then there's only really one option for a uh, right back at Spurs, and it, you know, it has to be Kyle Walker. Yeah, and that is because they signed him and Kyle Norton together as a pair. Yes, I remember. Yeah, two Kyles. Yeah, two Kyles from Sheffield United. Both of them were fullbacks, and um, Norton was a little bit more technical. Mm. And it seemed like uh, Kyle Walker was just uh, kind of looked a lot stronger. Mm. And uh, he didn't look especially great at the start. He went on loan to Villa. And he did well at Villa. And he came back. And to be honest, in like the early days, like AVB days and stuff like mm. that, um, he was a bit of a sort of, I don't know, he, 
he felt like he should be good, but he wasn't really a reliable player. You know, he was quite rash in some of the things he would do, but he also had really high capabilities, but you couldn't really rely on him. But then in the under Pochettino, though, him and Danny Rose, both of them, they just like went up so many levels. And Walker was just like, at some points, he seemed like a just an invincible player. Like he seemed like loads of players are fast, but I feel like on a like 100 meter track, I feel like Walker would be the one who would really, really do amazingly well at that kind of over that kind of distance. And he was just like, really dangerous running with the ball and improved so much as a defender. And now, like with England, he's the defensive option, isn't he? If they want to have a defensive right back, it's Kyle Walker. Never used to be like that. He used to be seen as a defensive liability, but he's improved. He's probably improved that even more under Pep as well. But under Pochettino, uh, Walker really became a key part of the team. So he's got to be the right back for me if we're going for a Spurs one. Uh, which is only fair after accepting David Seaman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, um, yeah, no, I've got no complaints with Carl Walker to go in that right back, to be honest. Uh, yeah, he was a bit rash in his early days, but yeah, he definitely did step up. And when you look back, he's not had bad managers coaching him, has he? Like nah, Pochettino, true. Pep. So, yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm happy with Carl Walker. All right. Well, you better pick a centre back then. Yep, so... My centre back, ah, oh, it's tough. It's tough. There's <clears throat> for me. There's two, two options for me, and it's either Mr. Arsenal Tony Adams or Mr. Tottenham Sol Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure which one to go for. Uh, no, nah, I'm gonna have to go for Mr. Arsenal oh. Tony Adams. Strictly come down since Tony Adams. Oh, I give it a bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Uh, obviously, Adams is a legend, legend for Arsenal. One of the few players. I don't know if he's the only player or one of the few players to win uh, uh, Premier League or Division One title um, over three different decades: '89, '98, and 2002. Yeah, he speaks for himself. Uh, one of the most distinguished centre backs for England, and obviously Captain England to your United Six semi finals as well. So, yeah, now for me, it's Tony Adams. That's that's who I'll go for. Paul, who's the uh, who's Tony Adams' um centre back partner? Is it wouldn't it be funny if you actually chose Sol Campbell? Yeah, well, I was thinking maybe we should have picked Sol Campbell and William Gallas as they both play for both. <laughs> it's true, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, no, really and nobody good. would know who chose them, you know. <laughs> That's that everyone else's homework to find out who chose who. Yeah, that would have been a weird twist, but I think you know Spurs, despite the defensive frailties which have uh, hampered my entire life, we have had a few good centre backs along the way, and more of them in more recent times. Hmm. Shout out out of Vero, I never liked him, and then big shout out to Vertonghen, who I really loved. And I think Romero is going to be a, a big one too. And I'll even give a shout out to Eric Dyer, who's really sometimes terrible, sometimes good. And at the moment he's good. But there's only one choice, King Ledley. And I you know, there's undeniable. I mean, he everyone knows he was blighted by injuries and it's like legendary the fact he would play without training. Mm. But let's be honest, often in the Ledley King period at Spurs, we were not a good team. <laughs> and uh, Ledley, <laughs> realistically, uh, was actually too good for us for most of the time there and really should have been playing at a big elite club. And maybe it's the injuries which let us keep him. I think maybe that might have stopped the move because mm. you know, he, was, he, was, he was amazing. He had everything. He's technical, tactical, physical a proper leader and like a leader in a nice, like a nice way I felt and uh, really like loved it at Spurs. So he's so good yeah, that we would have other centre-backs like uh, Kabul and Michael Dawson. And if those two played together as a partnership, Kabul and Dawson, it's an absolute disaster. Like it would be horrifying. Don't, it if, doesn't work. No, but if either one of them played with Ledley, they were really, really good. He really improved people around him. So, you know, definitely one of the most uh, 
beloved Spurs players of the Premier League era. And it, as much as I like Vertonghen, it's an easy choice for me to pick Ledley there. Mm. You know what? <clears throat> to be honest, I'd be surprised if you went um, any other way, to be honest. No, nah, King, he yeah. was a class defender. I just think, yeah, it's a shame with his injuries, really, isn't it? That just kind of stopped him a bit, uh, playing a lot more games, not only for Spurs, but also for England as well. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, nah, class player, though. I can't I can't disagree with that. Adams and King's not a bad centre-back partnership. No, they would actually be quite a nice pairing, I think. Ledley as well always had that thing of being a left footer, and that was a really, uh, really key attribute as well. Yeah, it brings good balance to the back four. Mm-hmm. Right, cool. So we're going to move on to left back. Uh, for me, there's only one one player I can mention, uh, and that's Ashley Cole. Despite the way that he left Arsenal, he's still yeah. the best left back we've had uh, Premier League era, and I think during his time at Arsenal, he became the best left back in the world, uh, especially those performances for England against CR7. Uh, so yeah, for me, I have to bring Ashley. I, I was I was tempted to say that like, girl cliche or someone mm-hmm. like that, just to wind you up, or yeah. you know, <laughs> Karen yeah. Gibbs or something, someone like that. But yeah, yeah well, on. they were, you know, Ashley Cole. Another one of my least favorite players, uh, <laughs> really sort of the tried to complete the the Paul Bacon annoying uh, route of playing for Arsenal and Chelsea. Like I don't know how much more he could try and upset me, <laughs> but undeniable player, like amazing player, mm. and had every aspect of a fullback, didn't he? Like, yep, every component yep. perfect. And the thing is, he wouldn't be out of place as a modern fullback in today's game either. He was very attacking anyway. Yeah. It's only when he went to Chelsea that Jose made him sit back a little bit and, you know, actually play as a part of back four. But, yeah, no, definitely, I reckon he could easily fit in to today's modern football. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that completes our back four, yeah? So, we've got... So, so far, we've got Big Dave in goal. I had to mm-hmm. make sure I said that correctly. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got Carl Walker at right back. Centre back pairing of Tony Adams and Ledley King or King Ledley, and left back we've got Ashley Cole. So, uh, oh yeah, just to our listeners as well, we're doing a four four two formation. So we're going to move to the midfield now. Do you want to do the left or the right? Do you want to over and do the left midfielder? Yeah, sure. So okay, for the wide option for this, this is actually probably the most contested position for the Spurs team. Because I, I mean, I know Sonny plays on the the right of a front three, but in this team he would have to play like in this position, wide in the mm-hmm. midfield. So Son, uh, amazing, and obviously a strong contender Gareth Bale. But I haven't gone for either mm-hmm. of those guys. I haven't gone for either oh, of those guys. You didn't you know? No, no. Okay. okay. So for me, not for the Sodger pick, in it. Yeah, yeah, I've gone for the shirt pick, David Ginola. Okay. Oh, yep, David. Yeah. I mean, another question, really. I think it's a fair question to ask. Like, what was this guy doing at Spurs in the late night? <laughs> because that's a valid question. Yeah, I mean, he in in nineteen ninety nine he won the Premier League Player of the Year in the season when Man United won the treble. Like, imagine like not being a United player who won it. Mm. And he was absolutely outstanding. He's probably one of the top players in Europe. And he was playing in a team which was consistently finishing 12th and had like Alan Nielsen and Ramon Vega in it and people like that. <laughs> Stefan Freund? Yeah, Stefan Freund. Not even yeah. one of the worst players. That's how bad mm. the team was. Mm. And so, yeah, I don't know what he was doing there because he was amazing. Was so exciting. So much like flair mm. and like real kind of glamorous guy. Weird stuff with like the. Like the Pantan stuff. Was it Pantan? <laughs> yeah, Honoria? I think it was. I it? One of them two, yeah. Yeah, I mean, how a... dated is that now? That's the most yeah. dated thing you can possibly <laughs> imagine now. Players are still doing it, but in a different way. So, and the thing is with him, yeah, he's like, yeah, in my opinion, because as we've already said, I'm not like a, a Spurs fan who proper like, picks up the team loads because I'm not, I'm not mad. You know, I'm quite like, uh, quite realistic and even yeah. pessimistic. And, for me, Ginola, like, 
he's Tottenham. He's an absolute personification of Tottenham because you know, our club motto is to dare is to do. Or dare is back here, that's Tottenham, is to dare is to do. To dare is to do is your club motto. Like, what does that mean? You know, do you know what the Arsenal one is? Yeah. Do you know the Arsenal one? Yeah, victory it's, through harmony, isn't it? Yeah, victory through harmony. So yeah. victory through harmony, that makes sense. Tottenham's is to dare and to do. So nothing even about winning or like a victory or nothing about it. Yeah. It's just, just like, daring. Yeah. To me, like to dare is to do. That means like try and do something interesting. And um, if it doesn't work, it's all right. Yeah. But at least you've tried. And yeah. Actually, that is what winning is, not actually winning, you know? It's, it's like, like taking part. It's, just, it's the taking part that counts. Yeah, but not just taking part. It's not like we're not like Charlton, but it's like. <laughs> it's like um, you know what it's like. It's like a Buzz Lightyear. You know, it's like it's not flying. It's falling with style. That's Buzz Lightyear. It's all about it's true. style. It's true. And you know, Ginola, he's more, he's more style than you know. Bale is amazing, and um, mm. Son is amazing. But Ginola was more Spurs, more style than than Son or Bale. And the thing is, if you're gonna be Spurs in the end. You're going to lose, so you may as well do it with style. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? You know what? When you um, mentioned Bell and Son, I was like, ooh, that's going to be a tough one. But then Ginola, mm. I do I do get the the nostalgia. I, I don't know. There's something about the nostalgia in it, the 90s yeah. players. And, you know, I think maybe Ginola meant more to Tottenham at that time. Them, I don't know. I don't want to say more, more than what Bell did now or Son now, but I don't know. There's something different because he was probably your only flair player that you had. So anything that you know, attacking wise, would normally go through him as well. So he's like really important to the team. I don't know if that's kind of accurate, Paul. Yeah, I think what you're describing is a diamond in the dirt. <laughs> yeah, in the rough. Yeah, that was the only option, and. uh yeah, he meant a lot to us because there was nothing else really to get excited about. The other best player we've already mentioned was Sol Campbell. Mm. And, you know, Sol Campbell was amazing, but as a centre-back, is only ever going to be so entertaining, you know? Yeah, no, you're right. You need, you know, the strikers get all the glory, don't they? Yeah. The Tekken players, at least. Okay, no, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, we'll go for Ginola. Just a quick one. First time I saw Ginola was... A couple years before he went to Newcastle, when Arsenal went on their run in the Cup Winners' Cup, and he played okay. PSG in the semi-final. So that PSG team was actually quite mad, and they had um, uh, Ray Brazilian midfielder Ray. They had oh, that's um, um, Ginola. Ray yeah. is someone's brother, isn't he? Yeah, I think he is. You know, I can't remember whose brother is. There's another. No, player. there is. I think you're right. I think he is someone's brother, though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and they had Ginola there, so that's a really good team. And um, yeah, that was a tough game that we played against uh, them. And Ginola was definitely one of their top players at the time. And mm-hmm. um, you know, I feel sorry for Ginola though because he got blamed for <laughs> France not qualifying for the World Cup in 1994, and it wasn't even his fault, you know. <laughs> but nah. you know, you know, those French, French like they just have dramas all the time. The French, yeah, we were talking about that on a podcast the other day because we had Stan Kamaliev on, who's uh, he's was a Bulgaria fan, and it was Bulgaria that yes, beat France. That beat and France, yeah, it? yeah, mad story that was. He never played yeah. after that at all. No, Julie just I don't know what happened. Julie didn't like him after that, and he never no. played for France again. And same as I think Cantona was in that team as well, that same game as on. Well, he didn't get looking after that either. Yeah. So, yeah, crazy times, but yeah. We're going to move on to a uh, centre midfielder. So, for me, a candidate for me, uh, for me, honestly, there's only one choice, and that's Captain Captain Fantastic, uh, Patrick Vieira. Um, I think it was Xhaka, sorry. No, <laughs> no, definitely not Xhaka. Um, mm. That's no uh, slight on Xhaka. Mm. <laughs> but. Now, no one can touch Vieira, man. He's just number one. Um, obviously, there's other players, maybe Gilberto or Ray Parler. If I wanted to go for someone a bit nostalgia, but no one touches, no one touches Vieira. Or comes close to Vieira. So, yeah, my option, uh, easy option for centre midfield, and I'm hoping that he'll wear the captain's armband as well. We might have to discuss that after. I see your face, yeah. there, Paul. 
But yeah, <laughs> no, easy choice for me. Sorry, Paul, uh, Patrick Vieira. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, he is very emblematic of horrible time in Spurs fans' life when it was Tottenham would play Arsenal and it'd be a midfield battle between Patrick Vieira and Tim Sherwood. And oh, red nap. Yeah, red nap if he managed to, to make it onto the if field. If his knees were okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was just a mismatch at the time. You know, that Arsenal team was... I mean, I don't like to... I'm not going to give any credit. You can do that yourself. But it was... Thank you. It was better than our team. I'll say that. And, <laughs> and it was not enjoyable. Totally. Not an enjoyable rivalry at the time. And mm. yeah, I mean, he was... He was just such an amazing player. Everything about mm. him. And such a... Like a leader, a captain who yeah. was... Yeah, no, he's just sort of... Lewis has said before, he was like... He was Wenger on the pitch. He just carried kind out his action. Yeah. Yeah. But do you remember that bit when there was that season at the start of the season? He got sent off like three games in a row or something like that. He kept on getting sent off. He did. I think it was uh, West Ham, one of the ones, one of the last ones where he got a long ban. I think he spat a Razor Ruddock. Oh, okay. That sounds so, familiar. Yeah. Mm. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. He had lots of um, disciplinary issues when he first came to Arsenal. And uh, yeah, he used to get sent off loads of times. And, you know, typical Wenger. Uh, I did not see it. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah, no, nah, definitely. Yeah, he grew into his, he grew into the English game and become stronger and stronger until obviously we won the title, which I don't like talking about because I don't wanna. That was too long ago now. <laughs> so yeah, no, nah, it just reminds me of talking about the past. To be honest, I don't wanna sound like a old school Liverpool fan that was always talking about the past. But yeah, now nah, Vieira for my option. Uh, Paul, who are you gonna go for to partner him? Hopefully, not like Timu Tiny or anyone like that. Oh, that is a blast from the past. Um, <laughs> not Timu Tanyo. I'm not sure if he still is, but until recently, his son was in the academy. I don't know if he's still there now. Okay. So, uh, Tanyo? Yeah, Tanyo. Okay. Yeah. I, he Didn't was anyway. I'm not sure. Okay. So maybe it'd be like an Erling Haaland situation and the son is amazing compared to the dad. But <laughs> might not be, who knows. You never know. I haven't heard much about him in a while, so maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Um, my midfield partner for Vieira is this is a real easy one for me as well. Um, because this is my favorite Tottenham player. Uh, also I love Luka Modric, but easy one for me, center midfield is Musa Dembele. Mm. He's my you know hero. What? Him and Vieira would be a good mix, you know, because they're both don't uh, have it. Yeah, I mean <clears throat> If you didn't watch him all the time, I think there's a lot of people who probably don't really know how good he was. But he, if you in those days for Spurs in the height of the Pochettino Spurs, he would be the man of the match pretty much every game, and he would normally be the man of the match in about 54 minutes before he got subbed <laughs> off because his his back started to hurt. But he was absolutely incredible. He, you know, he was a forward and he became an attacking midfielder and then he became like a defensive midfielder over time. And it's a shame because as a defensive midfielder, he was proper elite, world-class, but he didn't become that till he was like, I think, 27 years old or something like that. He unfortunately didn't find his position until quite late, but he was like so skillful mm. and so like graceful and so strong like i don't know how you can combine all those things together it's a bit like i don't know like a like a swan with a, like a rhino's head <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be weird to look at yeah like he like he could kill you with like elegance mm. or he could just like smash you apart he could do either of those things it's amazing <laughs> no he did he could I mean, yeah, ask Jack Wilshere if you don't know. I remember one time, like, seeing him <laughs> up against Wilshere, like, he somehow managed to do a pirouette nutmeg on Wilshere and, like, smash his face into the ground all in one move. That was one of my my key moments. I bet it was. <laughs> the, only the belly could do something like that. You know, I even have to admit, he was a class player, man. Like, on the ball, we couldn't get the ball off him. Strong. Quick feet, skillful, left peg. I don't know. I think left peg players just look different anyway. So yeah, whenever he did anything, it just looked amazing. But um, 
No, him and Vieira will be solid, you know, left foot, right foot combination again in the center, yeah. center midfield area. Um, yeah, Dembele is a serious, he was a serious baller. He's a baller. We never replaced him, to be honest. We've never no. actually got over it. No, don't worry, like, we didn't replace Vieira for about 20 years. So I don't know if we still even replaced him now, to be fair, <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, no, I can't argue with Dembele. Uh, no, good player, very good player, no. very underrated player. I think he's one of those streets will never forget type of players, though. Yeah, definitely, definitely, just uh, definitely won't ever forget him at Spurs because he he was my favorite player in the best period that Spurs have had while I've been watching them. So that's a big deal. Hmm. I think it's just um, the way he left it was a bit. I don't know, kicking the teeth, maybe. I don't know if that quite accurate. Well, he he was unfortunately he's really unable to play he didn't have uh, fitness not like um he was unfit but he just couldn't stay uninjured mm. and um i think he kind of needed <clears throat> he needed to the chance to go to china came along and i think it was a kind of long-term financial decision he needed to make and he couldn't mm. really get on the pitch and we you know we 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 had other players who were nowhere near as good but had to play all the time, Musa Sissoko and Harry Winks. And um, so I think it's kind of a mutual thing where they knew he couldn't get on the pitch and uh, he kind of, I think, needed to make a sensible decision. So I, I don't know. I, we haven't really beefing for that. Mm. No, fair enough. Fair enough. Just thought to double check. Yeah. Quick um, shout out to Harry Winks. Is he still, is he still with you? He's just gone on loan. He's oh, gone- okay. <clears throat> yeah, he's he got Sampdoria. Sampdoria. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting, interesting move. Yeah. I wish him well, but uh I think he needed a move. Yeah, he did. He did, didn't he? He's getting further yeah. further away from the England team now, isn't he, as well? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how he got in there in the first place, to be honest, but yeah. Well, no, nah, it's all relative. But I mean he's going <laughs> Going to Italy is not a good way to get in the England team with Gareth Southgate because some of the best playing which players right now are out there killing it and they're not in the thing. So, you mm. know, I don't want to hate on Southgate, but well, uh, it's current. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Okay, so let's move on to the right midfielder. So, you know what? I've got a couple of <clears throat> options. I was thinking, obviously, you got someone like Jungberg or Perez. I was tempted to chuck in and Alexi Sanchez because I was thinking for those two years he was just a monster at Arsenal. But I think I'm going to have to go for I think I have to go for <clears throat> Robert Perez. Yeah? Uh, I know. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to get Bobby in there. Um yeah, he took a long time to settle <clears throat> when he first came to Arsenal. Once he did settle, he was just, he was class and um Yeah, he was definitely definitely up there in terms of goals and assists and um yeah, now I thought he was he was amazing. He scored a lot of important goals. Um I think he scored one of the goals at White Hart Lane that year as well. We won the title there. So big game player. Um <laughs> Uh yeah no I'll, yeah. yeah I'll go for Robert <laughs> Robert Perez <laughs> yeah I mean he was a great player I did not like his um his beard <laughs> yeah he was, yeah. 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 he was he was an amazing player and uh I associate him most with like the claret kit yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah the, yeah that one season kit yeah yeah but he I mean he's as you said he. As you said about Dembele, I'm able to um, recognise that Perez is a great player and a sort of uh, unusual player, like not immediately mm. obvious what was so great about him, but he was he was good. I think I thought you might go for Sanchez because Sanchez was absolutely was. amazing. No, that was so close. Paul. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, but I think that when I see the players you've picked in that midfield, there, Perez and Vieira. I've got a question I wanted to ask you, MJ. Is that right? Yeah, sure. So, we said about when when I was young and Spurs played Arsenal and it was horrible for me because it was a completely different like level of team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was a bit like 
to be fair, it was probably like a rivalry like Barcelona and Espanol or something like that, where you're <laughs> local rivals, but you're completely different levels. Yeah. But then um, over the years, uh, gradually started like shifting. And there was even over the last six years, Spurs have been better. I don't think that's debatable. That's a fact. But not just about Spurs and Arsenal, but was there a particular moment when you realised everything was fucked and Arsenal was not the same anymore. And like you're gone from being like one of the best teams to like not every team get worse. Yeah. Was there a particular moment when it happened? Uh, all right. Well, <clears throat> is it as simple as like when they sold Henri or is it not like that? It is kind of like that. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of like that. When we when we sold Vieira first, I think mm-hmm. that was the first one because he was the first one to leave. Yeah, and then he kind of still uh, then okay after we still kind of had like Campbell and Torre and Henri. Then when Henri left, it was just like yeah, no, we're not competitive to the same level anymore. Even though we still did have a very good young Robin Van Persie and yeah. Fabregas. But to expect Van Persie to jump into Omni's boots for me was way too much. And one of the other things that um, just made it evidently clear to me was when we got absolutely spanked at Old Trafford 8-2. You don't lose to your rivals 8-2. No, I think that's a good point. Because that was like a landmark moment, wasn't it? I think that was real. And that was... Because there was a... Like, you had the... The team you've like spoken about, which you could name all the team, like the Lundberg, Perez, Vieira, Vieira, Gilberto team, and that. And then there was a bit after when you got like still like Fabregas and Van Persie, and then later on they still got really good players like Sanchez, Ozil, Cazorla. Mm. Like, it's mm-hmm. just getting a little bit worse all the time, isn't it? And yeah, then, it's I, like again a slightly knockoff uh, version every time. So you get the Henri, then you get the Van Persie, then you just go like Shamak. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the drop off the skulls. Yeah. It was gradual for a while, then it's just like off the face of a cliff, and it's like, whoa. But yeah, yeah that's, you know what? At the time, it seemed to happen like quite, even though it happened over a few years, it seemed to happen, the unraveling seemed to be quite quick, if that makes sense as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, nah, just, you just knew you wasn't competitive to the same level anymore. And when you had players like Ben Ayun and, no disrespect to Arteta, Arteta. You, you just know you're not challenging in the same yeah. form or that. Like, it's just not the same. Like from the the couple of years before that, when you had like Vieira and Gilberto, Emmanuel Petit, even the year like this, mm-hmm. maybe like the team before that. Uh, yeah, to go to where it was then, you just knew you knew what time it was. But you know, at the time they sold it to us as like you know Emirates. Um, and the Emirates is the trophy for the time being until the club can get themselves back onto an even kill. But then it just seemed to coincide with Abramovich coming to Chelsea, spending loads of money, and then City. And we'll just always play catch-up after that. Yeah. I think also, like, something I noticed, it seemed to get worse when, like, Arsene Wenger, like, he stopped bothering to get dressed and he just came to matches in the sleeping bag. What the (laughs) hell, man? It's it's because he couldn't unzip it, that's why. (laughs) That was, they never did well once he had the Puma sleeping bag. That was the whole Puma era, really, was the decline, I think, wasn't it? Also, yeah, it kind of was. You know what? I didn't buy any Puma kits either myself, so no. yeah, yeah, t- yeah, tough times, tough times, but yeah, no, I just think selling Vieira was just a start of the downfall for a few years, and then once Henri left, yeah, that was it, really. We're not competing for titles no more. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Good answer. Sorry to bring you down. I just always wondered That's that, right. like how a team goes from from there to like just at first it's gradual and then it seems quite sudden. It is because it now is it really is weird. And if you think about when invincible what's that oh three and oh four, then what two, three years later we we're moved into the Emirates and yeah, the team's not the same, you know. Um yeah, as I said, like Vieira left first. That last season at Highbury was his last one. We won the FA Cup and beat United the season after that. 
Yeah, it's just yeah, it's, it's just a mad time. It's just a mad time. It yeah. just seemed like um for me as well. I don't know why Venga was so quick to get rid of all of them as well. Uh, I do get he I, like later when he explained that like once they reach a certain level and they dropped off, it's like they could never get back to that same level again. But I just don't think getting rid of all of them <laughs> is gonna make you get back to the level anyway. So for me, you must have just stick with him and and ride out a bit longer. But there we go. Yeah, there was something not quite right about the uh the changeovers, I guess. But I guess he he done that well for a long time, but obviously lost it there. Mm. But you know, done last can't last forever, I guess. No, that's it. You're right there. Nothing lasts forever. But yeah, those are yeah, sad to look back on those times. I'm so sorry, mate. It's all right. I practically, I practically got over it about two years ago. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. joking. <laughs> all right, Paul, let's finish off our combined 11. So let's go for the strikers. Um, for me, okay. I don't know who you're going to say. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I there's some Spurs strikers I really love, but I'm going to have to pick. You know who I'm gonna have to pick because like loved Berbatov, loved Robbie Keane. I really loved Jermaine Defoe, but uh, you know, I have to pick Harry Kane at this point. It's I think he's undeniable. Yep. I honestly it took me like two years to accept that he was good. I just thought he was like fluking it for ages. It took me double then, that, it took me about four years. Yeah. <laughs> But like since then, not only has he like stayed good, he keeps on getting better. It's like cool. every year he gets like a new skill. Like he's mm. like he can suddenly suddenly he's unlock a new probably, skill or something. Yeah. Like at first he became one of the probably the top three finishers in the world. And then he's like one of the most creative players in the world, one of the best passers. And he he's like probably he's probably the top three number nines in the world and he's the top three number tens in the world. He's just absolute absolutely been ridiculous. Yeah. He's become like some kind of Alessandro Del Batistuta, like everything <laughs> yeah. all in one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I don't need to say anything else. He's, he's, he's a guy really. Mm. Yeah, no, I can't disagree with, with Harry Kane as well. The amount the of times he's flipping hurt me as well. Always seems yeah. to turn up for Tottenham against Arsenal. Yeah. Always scores in North London derbies. I'm sure he's got a record for the most goals in the North London derby as well. So, yeah, and nah, it took me ages to accept that he was actually like a world class striker. Mm-hmm. Um, as an Arsenal fan, he never want to admit that you know someone down the road's got a world class striker, and uh, yeah, it doesn't help when he keeps scoring against you as well. But <laughs> yeah, I think, but <laughs> I think it took me until about 2018 when he won the golden boot at the world cup to be like, okay, he's world class now. 2018. Wow, yeah, that is. I, I, I was just hating. I was just hating on him because he come through at Arsenal as well. We released him at nine, and he went Tottenham. I was like, that's even worse. But yeah, that's for another. That's for another episode. But yeah, no, nah, you can't hate on Harry Kane. And I'm sure by the time he finishes his uh, career and hangs up his boots, he'll be the record goal scorer, overtaking Alan Shearer. I'm sure that he will do that as well, and probably become the most assists. I, can't, I wouldn't be surprised if he does both records, assists and uh, top goal scorer. Yeah. And the league title at Spurs somewhere. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Steady on now, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have everything. Not every day is Christmas, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> you can have the rec- Premier League record, in it? But wait, oh, yeah. my question, though, put yourself in the Harry's position, yeah? What okay. would you rather the the individual accolade of being the top goal scorer ever in the Premier League or having a Premier League title. Is the Premier League title for Spurs? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you can't win the title of my lifetime. I'll be so disappointed. Uh, see, the thing is, to me, I don't know. I don't know about the um, all-time <laughs> Premier League top score. I guess that you'd be happy with that, but. To me, if Harry Kane joined Man City now and won the title, like if you haven't achieved anything, mate, there's nothing. Like mm-hmm. they could, they mm-hmm. don't. You haven't. You could easily do it without you. They probably will do it without you. That isn't like a. I know it's good to have a trophy, but to me, that <laughs> that is that is just buying a trophy, really, isn't it? <laughs> do the Chelsea that like, old five Chelsea. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'm completely wrong, and I've already said about the whole Spurs mentality. Maybe I've got it wrong, but if you could win a title with Spurs, 
and you're a Spurs guy, like that would be such a big achievement, you know. Mm. It's, it means it's more, not isn't it? Hard. I think so. Even if you weren't a Spurs guy, even if like say Richarlison, mm. I would say it be means it should mean much more to him to win a title at Spurs than at uh, Man City because it's a much bigger achievement, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You're right. You're Massive, right. in fact. <laughs> yeah. Ginormous. <But> yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, I don't know, but if you used to give him... I wonder what he would say. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what he would say, to be honest. He would probably say, like, you know, the golden boot. I don't know. what. I don't know what the PC no. answer is either. No, I don't know. And I don't know about, like, being the all-time Premier League top goal scorer because the thing with that is which is different from winning the Premier League title is, um, at some point, you could lose that record. Whereas if you win the Premier League title, you, you will always have that. But at some point, as would happen with Shearer or whoever, someone can break it. So mm. holding a record is only a potentially temporary thing. Well, I guess it's still good to hold it. I don't know. Yeah, it's true. I don't know, I don't know how footballers look at it. I don't know whether they lack the individual accolades or the team accolades. I don't know. Hopefully Maybe came like the individual ones. <laughs> You might not have much choice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Um, Paul, uh, I'm sure I don't really need to say much to you now about who I'm going to partner with uh, Harry Kane. Uh, for me, there's only one choice. I could have, you know, I love Kanu. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I mm-hmm. absolutely love and adore Dennis Bergkamp. Uh, Ian Wright's probably the reason why I support Arsenal, so I could have easily gone for Ian Wright, but. I'm just going to have to go for Thierry on this. Um, okay. King Henri, like, record Arsenal goal scorer. You know, the amount of times he used to bully Tottenham back in the day, it's just be lovely. I <laughs> think he's the one the one striker that just made King look average. I know everyone else would be like, yeah, no, King, let the King serious. But then against, when we played against Tottenham, I wasn't even worried about King, to be honest, bro. Like, I just no. know that. Yeah. But Henri does say that King is one of the best centre-backs he played against, weirdly, but uh, still... Um... Still, Henri, no one was that hard for him, was they? Nah, to be honest, you know, and even, even, um, I remember Henri also saying that, um, Gallas, when Gallas was at Chelsea, he was one of the mm-hmm. toughest centre backs. He goes that Terry, he said he didn't see Terry, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which I love. I don't know why, I just love yeah. that. Um, but yeah, nah, definitely, uh, Henri for what he done for Arsenal, what he contributed to the Premier League. I don't think I can go for anyone else. I think the only closest person I could probably go for was Ian Wright. But yeah, no, I have to go for King Thierry. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, another, this team, as I look at the lineup here, is basically mm. a collection of my favourite players and my most hated players all like mashed together into one side. <laughs> <laughs> that half and half, 50-50. Yeah. But like Henri, yeah, I still think for me, he's, a, he's the best Premier League player. Uh, I say that I think because he was the one I hated playing against the most. Mm. So that's yeah. the, the only way I can judge it. Mm. It's like me with Kane at the moment. Whenever we play Tottenham, it's like <sighs> this guy. I know, I know he's going to get a chance. He's going to fashion himself a chance out of nothing and then the score again. He always flipping does it. Yeah, that's it. That's, it's a good team. So mm. give us Let's the recap it. Yeah, let's recap the team. So in goal, uh, we've got Dave Seaman, uh, right back of uh, Carl Walker, centre back pairing of Tony Adams and Ledley King, or King Ledley, and left back of Ashley Cole. Into midfield, we've got um, Janola on the left, centre midfield partnership of Patrick Vieira and Dembele. Yeah, and we've got yeah, sick in it. I thought that midfield's quite the midfield pair is quite sick, though. I'm not gonna lie. And they got a the little flair, the French flair in the wings with Janola and Perez. Mm. And then up front, I think there's only I think this is has to be the like center forward partnership, which is Harry Kane and Thierry Henry. Paul, what's your initial reaction to that uh team? Yeah, I mean, as I said. <laughs> I think it's, a, it's an amazing team. I think, as I said, some of my least favourite players in the world and some of my most favourite players in the world. A lot of French players, yeah. actually. I know, I mean, no, it's not a few that. Well, and we know Arsenal did have quite a strong French connection for a long time, but then Spurs bring in Ginola as well. All mm. English back four, which is probably surprising. That's 
back five actually in fact yes yeah including uh the goalkeeper and so yeah it's, yep. it's big, Dave. <laughs> big Dave it's a good team <laughs> like and there's you could have a second team which would be good also really uh yeah, but also I'm sort of after some of the discussions along the way about uh Gallas and uh Sol Campbell I'm wondering if one day we should try and make a, a play for both play for yes. both I don't know if there's a full eleven, but there's enough. a few of them. Yeah, maybe we could do um, a five side team, maybe or six side yeah. team. Yeah, works. Because Bentley, Bentley played for both, didn't he? Also, yep, Bentley. That's definitely one. And the main man, Adebayor. Adebayor. Oh, I'm gonna forget Galas. <laughs> so we've got three. We've got half a six side team there. Yeah. So I'm sure I there's think... a few more. Yeah, we could work that out. 